Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 54. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 4. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 4 website. Hey, uh, we're kind of going to wrap things up here doing all of the laws of probability from a cross tabulated uh, table here. We're also going to create a joint probability table. Now here's the situation. Executives were asked whether or not they would remain with the company if they received a better offer from a different company. Now length of service variable we put here and loyalty we put here. Would remain, would not remain, and then we showed uh, length of service. Less than one year, one to five years, six to ten more than 10 years. These are mutually exclusive here. These are mutually exclusive here. Uh, the inside of this is uh, an AND criteria. Now, would remain, would not remain, right? If we're talking about cross tabulation, that is one variable. Loyalty, this is the second. So everything inside of here meets two criteria. To get here, we had to say true, they said they would remain, and true one to five years. So all everything in here is an and. Stuff out here, uh, that's just a single criteria. That's just a sum of would remain. So down here, we want to calculate joint probability tables. Up here, we have variable, variable, and to be uh, calculated here as a count, both have to be met. That's what joint means, right? It means and, A and B. If this is A and this is B, all of this is A and B. So we want to calculate a joint probability table. Now, how you do it is real straightforward. 10 divided by 200 would give us the probability for would remain and was here less than one year. 30 divided by 200 will give you the probability for would not remain even though they or and they've been here more than 10 years. What if we took the 120 divided by the 200? That would be w the probability out of all of the 200 that people said would remain. That's a single uh, variable there. So we can simply do the same formula in this whole table. Highlight the whole table. Whoops, that didn't work so well. My mouse stuck. That didn't work at all, just like that. And the active cell right there, you see, equals this divided by the total. And then you hit the F4 key. Now, this is the magic of Excel. You know, if you're calculating this by hand, you're doing a lot of individual calculations. But boom, just like that, that blue cell reference is relative, so it will move throughout the whole table, including 200 divided by 200, which is 1, which is what the 100%. The way we populate all of these cells with the formula is to hold Control and tap Enter. So that's it. A joint probability table is really quite easy in Excel, as if you have your, your data set up this way. Some of your homeroom problems are like that. Actually, in the next video, I'll show you how to take raw data, uh, like you might get in your job out there, and create this. It's easy uh, in, with various uh, methods. But now, let's think about this joint probability table. Uh, we want to calculate do a little practicing here. We want to calculate joint probability, an or, a conditional, a marginal, um, a bunch of different things. Not only from uh, this cross-tabulated data here, but also from our joint probability table. Let's look at our first example. What's the probability of randomly selecting uh, an executive who would remain and who has more than 10 years. Now, I put these in capital so you don't make any mistakes, right? There's the or, there's the given that. When you're out there, when you're doing your homework or out there doing your job, you're not going to see the big and, but hopefully you'll get enough practice to, to then recognize that. But there it is. Oh, two variables and then it's an and. R very straightforward. There's would remain and there's more than 10 years. So the joint probability is that right there. It's just 0.375. We've already calculated it. Now, I got to show you two other ways to do this because sometimes you don't have your joint probability or you have limited information. And I just want to do some practicing here. Uh, this is an and, so we're multiplying. 
Oh, but if there's uh, some overlap, we're going to have to use our multiplying rule. So the first thing is to get the would remain. So I'm going to say equals 120 divided by this 200. And then we have to multiply it by uh, our conditional probability, which means what? That the sample space has changed. Well, now we're saying more than five years and would remain. Well, there it is. There's the sample change. The denominator is 120, and we take 75, because 75 of all of the would remains came from this category here. So we multiply it times the conditional, 75 divided by 120. So that is uh, another way to do it. Now, let's take a look at this one. Notice that um, 120 is in the uh, first fraction numerator and then in the second fraction denominator, so they cancel out. So really, if you're given this kind of data, you can just cut to the chase, which is what we did when we calculated this. You could simply say 75 divided by 200. All three ways to do it. Now, what about uh, another and? Randomly select an executive who would not remain and who has more than 10 years experience. So this is would not. This one was would. Simply, I'm going to go straight to my table. There's my would not. There's my uh, more than 10 years. I'm going to say equals and get that 15% right there because I already calculated it. Again, this uh, video is uh, intended to summarize all the different ways you'll be required uh, in the homework and test to calculate these. All right, uh, next one, probability randomly select an executive who would not remain or has less than one year. OK, so this is or. That means adding. We're going to have to be careful of any overlap, because we're going to have to subtract it. I'm actually going to have to sc scroll up just a little bit here. Who would not remain? So the first one, we will get uh, who would not remain. So equals, and there's the would not. So I'm going to say 80 divided by 200 plus. And now I'm going to get a or less than one year, less than one year, 35 divided by still that same 200 minus the overlap. And the overlap is going to be right there, zoop, zoop, the intersection of those two right there, still divided by our uh, 200. Uh, now, you certainly could have done this different since these all are in the same have the same denominator, you could have done it uh, this way. So for example, equals the 80, oops, equals the 80 plus the 35 minus the 25, close parenthesis, and then divide by that uh, denominator. Uh, but you can, once you have this table right here, uh, you can just do the straight probabilities. They're already calculated. Why don't I go through all that? I'm just showing you, because sometimes you'll have this, sometimes you have this. Uh, equals, there's the would not remain probability, plus the less than one year probability, minus the and, the overlap. So 45 any way you slice it. Now, the next one, randomly, this is a conditional probability. Randomly sec select an executive who would not remain given that they've been here one to five years. Well, what happens, actually, let me make this a little bit smaller so we actually can see everything. OK, so <coughs> executives who would not remain given that f there's they've been here one to five years. A conditional probability means a sample space has changed. So we go right to one to five years. There's the denominator, and there's the numerator. Would not remain. So sample space went from 200 to 45. We limited it to just this one. The, the Inside the variable length of service, we li limited it to this one category. So the calculation is equals the 15 would not remain, given that they've been here one to five years. Now, you can also do this uh, from the joint probability table. And really, that's our formula for conditional formatting. We're going to say equals, and we're going to go to this category right here. This is the and divided by the full probability for one to five years, which is that right there. That was our official formula from our textbook for that, doing the probabilities. 
Now, marginal. Marginal are these probabilities out here. I actually have some diagrams. Join is the inside of the table, and the marginals are on the outside. <coughs> uh, randomly select executive who has one to five years experience. Well, that one's easy. It's just one to five years experience right there. If we were doing it from this table, it would be the total 45 divided by the 200. And finally, what about Actually, we have two more. Um, adding marginals. Let's read this. Probability, select an executive who has at least six years experience. So the smallest is six. Let's go up here and look. There's only two categories, this one and this one. So we'd have to add both of these. I'm going to Alt equals and then add those by right there. The last one is another or. Randomly select executive who would not remain or had one to five years experience. All right, so the, let's do this from the uh, joint probability table. Equals the would not remain. Oh, well, that's that one right there, that 0.4. Plus uh, one to five years. So that one's that one right there. So we've added. These are the marginal probabilities. There's just one variable being considered here. So you just add them, right? And then you also have to subtract the and. That is the uh, the intersection. Uh, and you subtract that, and boom, we get 0.55. So that's a little bit about how to do uh, probabilities, the various probabilities we've seen in this chapter from a cross-tabulated uh, table and also from a joint probability table. All right, we have one more video in this chapter, and it will be, uh, when we come back, we'll actually construct these from uh, some raw data. All right, see you next video.